Hi, I'm Mel Michelle, and welcome to Media Mondays. Who's excited about today? I'm excited because it is summertime. This is really a great time of exploration. There are a lot of things going on, but there's a lot of things to be explored to make the world a better place. And as you know, for the past few weeks, I've been talking about immersive media. We talked about immersive church. We talked about the immersive economy. And today we are talking about immersive education, which I'm very passionate about because immersive education and immersive faith is where I really got my start in virtual reality. And one of the first tools that I ever used for virtual reality, really storytelling and just learning how to communicate in that way was a tool called Thinglink. And today I have the head of education or the education lead at Thinglink, who is a friend of mine and also considered an ed futurist, an education futurist. She's very futuristic and just very cool as well. My friend Louise Jones from Thinglink is live on Media Mondays. Hey, Louise. Oh, hello. Oh, it's really nice to be here. Really nice to be here. Thank you for that lovely welcome. Oh, you're so welcome. And and listen, so you said that um, um, you said it's nice to be here. So can you kind of tell us where you are? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I live in Scotland in the north of the UK. Um, and I'm in the far north of Scotland in the Scottish Highlands, which is very mountainous. And I'm about 30 minutes from a place that everybody seems to know called Loch Ness, um, which apparently is where the monster is. I've never seen it myself, but apparently right. it's there. But yeah, so I'm in the far north of Scotland. But with my job, I cover education globally, education, community and partnerships for ThingLink. So yeah, you can be anywhere these days. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, as long as you've got a decent connection, you can connect with educators everywhere so yeah I might be lots of miles away but we're in touch all the time so it's all great. the time and that's why uh really I wanted to do this segment with you because it's second nature to us to jump on a call and 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 talk about these things but I really as the summer is coming up I know we are doing at least a couple of VR weeks over at talent search and we have some of our other education partners who are going to be working with this tool that we call ThingLink. So can you tell us about ThingLink? And I'll put in the comments uh, the URL for it. Yeah, absolutely. So ThingLink is a way where you can bring an image or a video or a 360 degree image or a 360 degree video completely to life with embedded hotspots. So if you imagine you've got a flat image um, and you want to actually put in some information in there that everyone can access, you can click and make a tag and then you can put in uh, more text and actually it's got an immersive reader built in so you can translate that into over 80 different languages. And you can also add in other images and you can also add in other video and GIFs but the greatest thing as well is that you can link up your media so that you can create tours. And for me personally, I've always believed in the importance of different types of media and bringing together ways of being visually engaging for students in education. And since the coronavirus crisis, we've just seen this really come to life because people, teachers, educators, people delivering e-learning are finding new ways to connect with their learners. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an example as well so you can see what it looks like. But that's essentially it. It's super simple to use. You literally take your picture or your video and then upload it to ThingLink and then start adding tags. Once you're ready, you can share it out and embed it on social media or on your website. And yeah, it's got some really cool features. But in essence, it's about linking things it's the missing thing link <laughs> oh wow so listen i have it on the screen at thinglink.com 
uh, for those who want to go check it out. We're going to show you some examples, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, let me back up a little bit in the, the time that we have, Louise, and let's just back up to immersive education. When you mm -hmm. think about immersive education, what does that mean uh, to you? I'll, I'll say what it means to me, but I'll ask you first. What does it mean to okay. you? So immersive education to me is about where you can bring a whole different range of sensory experiences and mix that with augmented reality or virtual reality. So you're actually immersing yourself into the learning or immersing yourself into the experience. So if you think about a context um, or a place or a space that you want to bring to life, uh, you can actually do that by embedding other sounds, other, other images. So you're actually creating something which is really powerful and really rich. Um, and, and that to me is what immersive learning is about. It's about being living and breathing and being in that context. And I love it. So for me, I totally agree with everything you just said. And then I'm also going to say it brings you into the topic uh, on a, on, on a, in, in various levels, various layers, like Whereas before you might have a picture and it's subject to your own interpretation, which is fine. But in this case, you, you, you have the various layers of what that picture may mean. You could have audio in it. You could have links to YouTube in it. You could have, uh, you know, the list just goes on and on with the amount of educating that we could do with this kind of multi you can't really call it multimedia with this mixed media type of concept. And I think ThingLink is a great entry point uh, to this discussion and for a user just to get started in this new way of type of, of learning. And one of my education friends is here. Hi, Miranda, Miranda. Cole, who is a, a tech educator uh, at her school Crossroads here in the area. We're talking about immersive education. So would you say that too, Louise? Would you say that's kind of yeah, it? Absolutely. And I think that when you talk about the layers and being able to add things in and how I kind of really started to explore immersive education and immersive learning was really born out of accessibility. And I found one school that was producing these incredible posters. Um, and the posters were uh, policy points uh, and, and behavior expectations that the pupils had of the adults in their community. So they made this poster and I'll show you what it looks like. And it was beautiful, but it just was words. And you see things like sketch notes. Sketch notes are like really popular. And to me, they're just like a bunch of words. Um, mm -hmm. I can't really kind of unpick them. And you often see sketch notes if you've been to a conference and there's this kind of mind map that comes out. And I was like, well, how can you bring that to life for people? It might be okay for the people that were there, but can you really understand? And where's where were the children's voices in this poster? So I started working with them and we turned the poster into a thing link and then the students made their own little video clips to emphasize the points. And they also put a text in so that parents who maybe didn't have English as a first language could then understand the points in the poster. And we need to be much more aware of accessibility and making uh, voices come to life. Um, and, and that's yeah. what oh, and that, that's what got me started really on it was thinking about it from, you know, how can we really bring people's voices to the fore and understand the meaning rather than just through conveying text on an image bringing voices to life. And in this day and age, you know that it's ever so important um, without saying, but in doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And understanding, you know, just, just and, and everyone has the right to be able to to share their voice and and to, to really look at the depth of meaning behind it. And, and you don't get depth of meaning behind words on a poster. For me, um, I, I'm, I quite like having different visual aspects and right. I've seen some amazing thing links that have been addressing power and privilege and 
these are all in our collections and um, and I think that this is a really as you say a really important time to actually really unpick and and bring voices to the fore show us some examples of this um this is what I'm excited about I'm excited to get into some examples so right now if you haven't already shared this or really really start to tune in because we've been talking quite a bit but we can show you better yeah, than sure. we can tell you right louise so let's yeah, see absolutely. i'm going to start off with that one that um the first ever thing link that i was involved in and you'll see on the right hand side here this is that relationships policy that i was talking about and this is the relationships policy which are the the expectations that pupils had of the adults in their community and it's fair to say that relationships are kind of broken down in the community so they did this poster which is great but then it was put up on the walls but then it didn't really convey different language or the young people's voices so they put in some little text box here and here you can see text box and this actually opens up into immersive reader and you can translate this into 80 different languages as i said so you know let's just pick something uh let's pick let me see i'll just pick something just to show you french um and then you can translate the whole thing and then you've also got les adultes prennent un moment you've got like text to speech as well as the language translation and that's just wow. one example but what i loved about this one is that um the pupils scripted their own video I feel calm and safe. about oh you know, they want to feel calm and safe so let us go outside when there's a storm in our head and the these are you know just so important they we want give each other hugs to feel love so we give each other a hug. the pupils actually created these and now imagine that this poster has so much more depth and so much more meaning to it and i just love the fact that you know the, the pupils created all of these so thinglink isn't just about you know teachers creating content and sharing it it's actually about pupils creating the content themselves and collaborating on it and then also being able to make their voices heard and that's where my my kind of thing came from my thing link came from so then i started looking at other examples particularly ones that have come to life um for the recent crisis and this one just absolutely makes me giggle. It's such a hoot. So this is a teacher in Scotland. She lives down in a place wow. called Wow. And she built a classroom like with using something called Bitmoji. And when the schools were told that they were unable to have pupils in the classes anymore and i'm going to really refrain from using the words schools were closed or school closures because i don't think that's fair to educators because the learning continued it's just that the physical spaces weren't open they had to adapt and think on their feet really really quickly and a lot of educators were sending out it's a good Scottish word, screes and screes and stuff. So they're basically giving out lots of assignment for pupils and parents were saying, hang on a second, this is just like confusing. We've got uh, like siblings getting different types of work. And also they didn't have time to do it because they were working themselves from home. So this teacher created a choice board and she wanted to make it really engaging for her learners. So she just used an app, sorry, it's a train going past. I live right next door to a train line. Um, that'd be the express to London going past all the way from Scotland. But what she did with this classroom is that she made these hotspots and she put in text and video together. But instead of just using video of herself, she wanted to make it really engaging for her first grade. So she did a, a My Talking Pet and made her dog Hi, Penny, oh, wow. brilliant. My mum says you are all brilliant at reading and writing sentences. So that's what she wants you to focus on this week. Reading and writing sentences. I can't wait to read what you've written. And then she goes on and it's just like lovely. And, you know, these aren't things that every pupil has to do. They can like dip in and pick things. And then I saw an educator who actually is based in 
Texas, in Austin in Texas, and she took this one stage further and wow. she started bringing differentiated icons. So pupils could choose what they were doing. They've got the to-go buffet and uh, these are like different types of assignments and the, uh, the icons all mean something that the pupils have got used to. So she would do this on a weekly basis and just hand this out to pupils. And you've also got all the hello from the other teachers saying hello and you can check in and there's problems of the day and forms. So what she's been starting to do here is to build in web links as well. So here you can go to the right grade and that could be a web link to say a Google Doc or a Microsoft form or something. So you can do links out. So again, um, just some really, really creative things. And you can also embed video and um, like YouTube as well. So you can create your own videos, but you can also embed uh, YouTube. So then I, I started looking at other examples that are coming to life. And um, this one actually kind of brought a tear to my eye because this one um, uses 360 degree images. So I've been showing you normal images, 2D images. So this one is 360 images. And yes. Head teacher here has now started to knit them together using the tour tag. So here you can go to a 360 tour of the school and you can tour around the school. And what was really nice about this is they did this because they wanted the pupils to remain connected to the places and spaces they know and love their classroom. Wow. Whilst the schools did physically shut their doors quite quickly. Actually going back to school can be really unsettling for some pupils when they've got used to the routine of being home. And it's all about managing change and transition. So this teacher now, you can it, go into each of the classrooms and the teachers have... Um, okay. Well, sit tea, sit tea, sit tea, doing happiest tea of i hope you're all fine and you're safe and well i'm missing you so so much but i know that you've been getting on working really hard for your mums and dads we've got some new work set for you now soon and um, there'll be something on mini beasts you have some reading books and some maths activities so have fun enjoy stay safe and wash those hands <laughs> gokey gokey joy love <laughs> I think that's just absolutely fantastic. So I've put this collection um, up on your chat link and there's some other really nice examples here because, you know, what teachers have done is they've now realised that multimedia and multimodal media, those layers that you talked about, El Michelle, can really help to bring a personal touch and actually with digital learning and teaching, it's the social presence of the tutor, the personal touches, the fact that they're being human, the schools are creating a culture of connection. And I think years ago, when I was talking about tech integration in schools and districts, it was very much about creating a culture of innovation so people would use the tech. And I've kind wow. of... I've kind of moved away from that now. I'm thinking about how do we create a culture of connection? And I think the culture of connection um, is more important than ever before, given everything that's going on in the world. You know, being able to feel connection and love and to places and spaces, whether they're physical or virtual, is going to really help us to feel safe and comfortable, address issues, but also manage that change and that transition. So that transition in that classroom was about um, going back to school, um, but parents and carers were able to support their child in making that transition because they know what the classroom looks like and how many schools really struggle with parental engagement because parents sometimes think about their own experiences of school which might have been uncomfortable but something like this just really really brings it to life so that's just a few examples for you and um, i can show you lots more where you've now got sort of like big districts that are putting together transition for pupils that are changing schools and with this one again you can go in and have a look they're combining 
um, video as well as um, the text and images as well. So on this one here, they've got a whole kind of video intro and drone footage. Welcome to our virtual tour of Beeslack. I am Missy Semple oh. and I'm going to be your tour guide. As you move into school, you'll see lots of different icons. You should click on the yellow video icons to view a short video. So, so that, in essence, is just to give you a quick whistle stop of a couple of examples of um, ThingLink in action. But what I want you to start thinking about now is how you can then think about this in the workplace. And you can... You know, there's this, there was this program when I was little, and it, I'm sure, I think it was called Play School. And at the end of the program, they would um, show you how something was made in a factory. And I used to be fascinated. Yes. I remember seeing how toilet rolls were made and, and tomato ketchup and stuff like that. And I'm thinking, well, you know, we used to have to rely on programs, but now schools, teachers can actually work in partnership with local businesses and say you know let's take a 360 of the workplace so that we're enabling our students to be work ready and understand the workplace and I was talking about this today with another college and they were saying that because of COVID many businesses are not going to be taking on apprentices they just can't take that risk and right. how can colleges make sure that students are that are college leavers are work ready and how can you know, having that advanced understanding of health and safety and the workplace and those kinds of experiences help them. And then we start thinking about construction and imagine combining those 360 tours with BR headsets so that you mm -hmm. could experience what it was like to work at height and you've got 360 at the top of a crane or something, you know. So it's, it's, I get really fired up and I know you and I get really fired up. About Man, this. I, you now, Louis, you know, I can listen to you talk all day. We have many people on here who are just fascinated. We have educators, we have business leaders who are just kind of tuned in and there's no wonder they're parents uh, that are tuned in. I know El Michelle Media and ThingLink have partnered to bring uh, ThingLink into some of the unique communities that we serve namely uh, communities of faith uh, and uh, minority communities, and that we're trying to work to build more of uh, a digital futurist uh, type of learner who, like you said, is not just about being driven by the tech, but being driven by connection, you know? And so what are, I see my brother, uh, T1, who's an artist, very forward in his approach. He's a music artist, a dad, a minister. He's on here uh, just watching. What, as I know you're being considered for an Ed Futurist Award next month, and we believe you're gonna get that, okay? Future of education. We got a couple of minutes left. What do we need to be thinking about? In my mind, um, there is no back. Like, you know how people are like, oh, we're going, there is no back. It's only forward. And we have to work on connectivity uh, as far as devices, you know, that type of connectivity and our approach to using technology. I believe that too. But what are you seeing, uh, Louise? What are you yeah. seeing? So you know how before when you did a CV and you sent that off for a job, you know, that whole um, multimedia and multimodal CV, so sending people an image with embedded media um, is going to be so much more, pre you know, more prevalent um, than just using standard text, people having the opportunity to actually highlight their skill sets and actually... You and you know this, this is some work that we've been doing with pupils to create a, a visual CV, which isn't just about CV you send off to an employer, but it's enabling them to visualize their skill sets and also to be able to articulate that to interview. So let's go beyond standard text. And um, the other thing that I'm really passionate about, and, I, and I've mentioned that in earlier as I was speaking, is that I think that schools will become a place yeah they're always going to have a childcare function but they are going to be much more about relationships connection 
learning those kinds of um, skills around interaction and love and things that you you really can't can't learn digitally you know how you greet people how you love people how you play and I really believe in play based learning and playful experiences so actually digital so that's the, that's that's what it'll be more of when you're in school and everything else can just go kind of like as part of the online world so as well as kind of education shifting away in the classroom and my background originally was community and youth work and that was founded on principles of empowerment participation inclusion equity and equality so that was drilled into me from from my outset and you know that's where I started 25 years ago and I don't think there's ever been a time when I've seen modern learning and teaching being more akin to the principles of good community and youth work but then yeah. also digital having the ability to use all that different type of media knowledge acquisition research project-based learning which will also enable people to develop skills for the future as well. I think there'll always be the need for like hands-on in, you know, in college, you know, those kinds of ex ex skills that you just can't learn online, particularly in manufacturing industries and, you know, engineering. So it's really important that we still think about that at the upper end of our school careers. But, you know, for, for the primary schools and where we're starting out, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing schools much more focused on culture of connection. Maybe this is a pipe dream for me. Maybe this is kind of my wish for the world. But um, I think I'm seeing some of that, you know, we, we yeah. it has has driven the fact that we need to be connected to each other we need to develop relationships we need to be yeah addressing some some of those so yeah and and culture and heritage i think is going to be a huge big part of this culture of connection and when we talk about connection it's not just to each other in the here and now it's connection to our past and our heritage as well i've yeah. seen some fantastic work going on in vermont um vermont art online they sent each of the curators from every single museum in Vermont um, instructions on just how to use their phone with the Google Street View app and take 360 of the museums and then they knitted them all together and made sure that these were accessible resources to all the, the all the families and all the all the pupils in Vermont and that's, that's a great example so I think that's that key opportunity to be able to do this that's key with immersive education key with virtual reality even, um, bringing someone, bringing presence uh, from a place uh, that someone might not have otherwise been able to see in such a way is, is also uh, really high on my list and, and why I got involved. And I know one of our primary things we'll be working on is this kind of more choices, more chances, visualizing skill sets. Um, yeah type of so, immersion, you know? So if you imagine pupils in a school that were able to articulate their skill sets and those are communicated out to the business communities and then they can start to think about career paths and vocational pathways for the students. Um, I think that's incredibly powerful and, you know, we need to be far more connected to our business communities and understand that school community is just not the school, it's um, the school and, and the businesses and the other establishments and institutions that are there. So, you know, it benefits everybody when people can articulate their skill sets and understand um, what it is that they want to and then that creates more um choices for young people if businesses are creating vocational pathways and how do we encourage young people to achieve their dreams and stay in school and have positive destinations is that we create more chances and more choices yes and we have edna here who's in education also in ministry or, who i've known for a while who says she hopes that the culture connection catches on quickly and that she's super excited from what she's seen on the live and uh, we appreciate that, Edna. And I, I put that y'all can inbox us if you want more information on our Visualizing Your Skill Sets program with ThingLink. This is yeah. going to be our new effort. 
at using the Thing Link tool where we'll really help help the, the students, the learners really dig in and, and come away with something very special. I personally think as an African-American woman that this will help pull back some of the layers, uh, some of the, the stereotypes, some of the, you know, really just ill thoughts that many people may have towards different minority groups when they can begin to in view projects like these, these type of thing links and understand that there's always more to someone than what meets the eye. And so I'm very, I'm very excited about this. And I think it's now is the time to do it. Absolutely. And part of the visualizing skill sets is not just something that you kind of like pluck out of the thin air. Um, it's built on developing learner journeys and using other tools, whether it's, you know, a place to um, like a Google site or an e-portfolio or something. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just that you're able to do that. And then through having reflected discussions, either with your teachers or someone of your choosing, someone that's important to you, someone that hopefully understands power and privilege as well. I think that's that's a crucial part of being able to be reflective is that you're expressing your uh, or, or uncovering and discovering how you learn to learn, which is metacognition. And then from that, you can think about the reflective discussions where your skills are learned from, and then you can actually then use other examples from your learner journey to, to highlight and exemplify that. And then that really helps learners to be able to understand where their skills come from. Um, and, and we've seen some of this in practice. Um, we haven't got a script as it were. I think, you know, it's just a, a good concept and we've seen it work with um, some schools in Scotland. And the learner journey is not just a kind of, here's what I've achieved. It's about who am I, where am I, where am I in my learning? Um, which, are the, which are the headings? So it's a world away from saying this is what I did in English or this is what I did in math or this is what I did in French and this is what I did in the sports field. It's more about, you know, where, where you're at. This is awesome. Louise with ThingLink. Oh, my goodness. So please inbox us. There'll be more that will uh, come out about our partnership. But I'm very excited about working uh, on this particular project because everything we do at El Michelle Media is about culture and consciousness. And I think that this is, uh, this is what's needed at this time. We're at our time, Louise, but you know, I'm very thankful for you and for everything you shared and congratulations in advance on that award oh. you're gonna get. Yeah. Oh, I don't, know, I don't know about that, but yeah, it's, it was yeah. It's a little icing on the cake, I think. I, um, I, I truly believe whether they recognize you as an ad futurist or not, you are that. And we are glad to call you friend. So thank you oh, so much. Thank you. No, thank you for inviting me. And thank you to everyone for the comments. And yeah, we are not going to be strangers by any stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it too. Yep. More to come. Thank you all for joining us. More very intriguing discussions on Media Monday. So we'll see you back here next week. Bye. Thank you.